And mysteries about an actress and a politician are played out inside a 1927 California house. These stories and more, if walls could talk. Hello, I'm Grant Goody. Welcome to If Walls Could Talk. Many people dream of finding the perfect fixer-upper, a house with great potential that they can restore and leave their mark on. Coming up next, a politician and an actress are cast into the spotlight after clues to their extravagant lifestyle are discovered inside a 1927 California home. She would make her entrance into the party by coming down the stairway. Stay with us. Welcome back, I'm Grant Goodeve. Being in the right place at the right time is part of the thrill for anyone trying to buy an historic home. Over 30 years ago, Don Wiley and his wife Nora admired a 1927 Spanish colonial in Northern California. After waiting patiently for the house to come on the market, they finally became the new owners of the stucco home. And as Don began to explore the rooms, he was excited to discover memorabilia from the previous owners that cast their lives in a dramatic light. In 1971, when Don Wiley purchased his Gridley California house with his now late wife Nora, all he knew was that the original owners were once active social climbers in the town. But after moving in, Don was dismayed to discover that memories of the first residents weren't the only things climbing around his 1927 property. The growth on the outside was tremendous. It had even taken a carport down, and so there were some big posterior vines. Also pulled a tree down in the back. Once the vines were cleared, Don turned his attention to lifting the dark curtains on the inside of the house. Most of the windows were covered by deep maroon velvet drape and so there was no light that could get into the house. Children in town, they thought of this as being a spooky house. <laughs> After Don let in more light, he began to restore the rooms, trying to remain faithful to the original character of the three-bedroom home. When he found blueprints in the garage, he was surprised to discover that the original owners had slightly different plans for the house. The blueprint showed that the residence was originally designed for Mrs. J. E. Frazier and was meant to have only two bedrooms and a grand central staircase. Don wondered why the third bedroom in the house was not in the plans and why the stairs were so prominent. He was able to piece together the mystery when he turned up a collection of theatrical volumes dating from the early 1900s in the master bedroom. This is a very old one here, more, more modern monologues. This is uh, very well used. Don noticed that many of the books had been signed by Mrs. J. E. Frazier or Alice Frazier a local actress of some repute. Townspeople told Don that the mysterious third bedroom had actually been Alice's personal dressing room and that she enjoyed being the life of the party in her home. The story is that uh, she would make her entrance into the party by coming down the stairway with her gown and certainly she would make a grand entrance. Alice's husband, Jack Frazier, was a state assemblyman who enjoyed a good reception as much as his wife. Locals also told Don that the Frasers, who lived in the house for 50 years, entertained all the California governors in the 1930s and 40s. But Don found signs in the dining room that Jack Frazier's popularity extended from the social party to the political party. In the cabinets under the window seat, Don uncovered evidence of Jack running for a government seat. We found these three political signs in the cupboards here, which indicates that Jack was elected to the assembly of the state of California from the 4th District. Don was pleased to turn up Jack's campaign materials, including political pamphlets, and also to learn that his home's builder was indeed 
a jack of all trades. Jack Fraser, in addition to being an assemblyman, was also on the uh, Butte County Board of Supervisors, and um, he was on the city council and uh, mayor for a short period of time. But after digging in a drawer, he also realized that the statesman had earned a special license within the community. Well, here's a 1935 license plate with the number designation A4, which is Assemblyman 4th District. This is obviously the license plate for Jack Fraser's car. I think it's great that that's still here. Wouldn't mind putting it on my car, but... <laughs> to this day, Don continues to enjoy the politics and plays he discovered in stages. And as he reflects on his home's dramatic changes, he's reminded of the former characters who spent their life here in the limelight. Don already had an inkling that Alice Frazier liked center stage, and the blueprints he found further colored his impressions of the local actress because it was her name, not her husband's, that was at the bottom of the plans. Another detail Don noticed on the blueprints was that Alice wanted a large balcony off the bathroom, but this feature was never built. For questions or comments, please write to If Walls Could Talk, care of HGTV, Box 50970, Knoxville, Tennessee, 37950. Be sure to include the episode number and your daytime phone number.